I often ask the question on passage tests, what's cool about, and as much as I appreciate it when students say, well, it's Latin, what's cooler than that, I'm usually looking for one of four answers, and each of the answers has a distinctive um, spelling aspect that you'll be able to recognize if you practice this a little bit. So if I ask what's cool about something, I'm usually looking for one of these four answers. Onomatopoeia, um, which is when a word m sounds like what it means. Um, reduplication, which uh, reduplication, if you Google reduplication, is a very um, complicated linguistic aspect, and it has a lot of different facets to it. Um, for me, I focus on a verbal aspect of reduplication, and it's actually kind of a holdover from the ancient Greek. We'll talk about that when we get there. Inceptive, um, there will always be the letters SC there, and inception shows the process of something happening um, rather than it's completed. And then diminutive is, um, as, you, as it looks, is that something is small or cute or dainty, and will often have either the letters UL or ELL. So in these next few slides I'm going to show you some examples of these and give you some tips on how to recognize them. I imagine that onomatopoeia is a term that you've heard in your English classes. Um, I always get frustrated when uh, examples are given of onomatopoeia like bang and they say well it means what it sounds like and it sounds like what it means and it doesn't really mean anything so I think it's a, it's a tricky um, term to find good examples of in English. Um, in Latin, Latin is very onomatopoetic, and I've given you some examples here. The participle susurrans means whispering, and you can hear susurrans just like when we whisper, the most distinctive sounds are those S noises. This susurrans, the sound of it mimics the sound of whispering. Pipiabat is a um, verb used by a Roman poet that refers to the chirping of a bird. So you can imagine pip 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 pipiabat. Tintinawit is a verb that has to do with ringing or making a, a ringing sound. So you can imagine tin 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 tin. Um, sometimes it's pairs of words, tunditor unda. This is a, um, a two word phrase that has to do with the waves of the ocean pounding the shore. And so you can imagine, like when you think about when you're in a distance and you can hear the ocean and it's coming in a big wave, crashes on the shore, tunditor unda, and that also mimics the kind of growling kind of sound that is often underneath a uh, stirred up ocean. And then this last one um, is from Virgil, fit sonitus spumante salo. And this is a description of um, snakes slithering through the ocean. And um, you can see these S's are signifying the slithering sound and possibly the noise that the snakes are making um, as they're slithering through the ocean. Reduplication as, at its bo most basic is just a repetition of a syllable. So some people would say that the English word, when we call our mother mama, that's reduplication because it's got two syllables, papa is reduplication. And, and that's true. If you asked a linguist what's reduplication, it has a very broad answer. Um, but I focus on a very specific type of verbal reduplication, and it comes from the ancient Greek. In, um, in Greek, when a verb goes from present to perfect, very often it gains an extra syllable. So here you can see this is the present, and this is the present stem here, and then this is the perfect stem, and tango goes to tetagi, and this tata of the double syllable there is a verbal reduplication. Same here, posk goes to poposk, so that kind of stutter syllable at the beginning. Um, kad goes to kekid, kur goes to kukur, and pelo, pelare goes to pepul. So, um, when I'm talking about reduplication, I will only be talking about verbs in the perfect system. So first and foremost, it's going to be a verb in either the perfect or the pluperfect tense or a verb form that is built upon the perfect stem. 
and then it'll have that little stutter step to it. So a lot of times I have students, you know, think about if you reduplicated um, a basic English word, desk, it would go to the desk. And think about that. And if you think about like a model like that, maybe it'll help you recognize these reduplication examples. As I said earlier, inceptive verbs show the process. Sometimes they show the beginning of something, but they show the process of something happening. Um, so it's not that, and I'll give you an example, this first one, rubesco, means to grow red, means to blush. It's not that someone is red, that would be rubeo. It is rubesco, somebody is growing red. Convalesco, we get the, the English word convalescence from this. Convalesco, somebody is getting stronger or getting better. Iraskor, it means to become angry. It's not I am angry, I'm getting angry. Nosco means to get to know or to come to understand. Noe means I know. That doesn't have the SC in it. But if I'm coming to appreciate something or um, coming to learn about something, it's that SC, Nosco. Proficiscor means to set out, and it's, again, the process of leaving a place. It's not I've left. It's not I'm walking away. It's I'm setting out. That is something that involves a process. And then adolescence, you would recognize this. This, you know, this We get the word adolescent from that. And, and literally, an adolescent in English is, is someone who is becoming an adult, and that's that same SC. So inceptives will be verbs, and they will um, show the process of something. And as far as I'm concerned, here at St. John's Prep, when we study them, they will always have that letter SC. And finally, diminutive. So something that is diminutive is kind of small or cute, or sweet. And um, often it's a term of endearment, often it's condescending to call something small. Um, but here are some examples. Again, you'll almost always have a UL or an E double L in it. So a homunculus is a little man. So homo is man. Homunculus is a little man, a cute little man. Libellus is a little book. Liber is book. And libellus is a small little book or a cute little book or a pamphlet. Puella, we know, is, means girl. But what we haven't talked about is the fact that puella is actually a diminutive of puer, which is a little insulting. But puella was considered a small little boy or, you know, could have been considered as an insult, you know, uh, lesser than a boy was a puella. Bellus is an adjective that means pretty. And um, this is, you know, beyond what you'll probably see, but... It's actually the diminutive of bonus. So if you're a good little thing, that means you're pretty or cute, you get uh, bellus. Musculus literally means little mouse, and it, um, it means muscle in Latin. That's because they used to think, the Romans thought that when you flexed your muscle, it looked like a little mouse was running around under your skin. So musculus means little mouse. And then gladiolus means little sword, and a gladiolus plant has leaves that are shaped like swords. So that um, olus here is the equivalent of the ulus. So if I'm asking about a word and I'm saying what's cool about it, if you notice this ul or this ell, um, it'll be a diminutive.